Welcome back to the lesson 5 of the After Effects series. My name is Soman and you are watching Purple Pie Studios. And in this lesson, we are going to learn everything about the keyframes and all the different types of keyframes in After Effects. And finally, we are going to work on a project where we are going to implement all the concepts that we are going to learn throughout this lesson to get a good grasp of all the keyframes that are there in After Effects. And you can download the practice file of this lesson from the link in the description or from the link pinned in the comment section. So first, let's check out what are keyframes. In After Effects, keyframes define the value of the property. So let's understand with an example. So here we have a shape layer. Let's open the transform property and let's add a keyframe on the position property by clicking on this stopwatch. And by default, After Effects adds a linear keyframe which looks like a diamond shape icon like this. Now let's select the shape and place it in one of the corner. As I'm moving the shape, you can see the X and the Y position value is changing. And let's place it over here. This X and the Y position value you can see over here. These values are stored in this keyframe. Now let's jump on to next two seconds. And let's select the shape and place it over here. And in this process, you can see After Effects has created another keyframe over here, which stores the value of the X and the Y position property. So to be exact, the anchor point position of this shape layer at this position. And as we have created two keyframes in the position property, you can see there's a line that is joining these two position keyframes. And when I move the time indicator in between this keyframe, the shape is also moving. That means After Effects has automatically created the in between frames. And if you zoom into the preview panel, you can see the dots over here. And if you press page down, you can jump onto the next frame. As you navigate through the frame, you can see that the shape is jumping from one dot to the other. So these dots represents a single frame in the timeline. Right now, all these dots have equal distance because these keyframes are linear keyframes. Now let's add few more in between keyframes. So let's place the time indicator over here and let's move the shape and move it down over here. And let's move the playhead over here and let's move the shape and place it over here. Now, as we have added few extra keyframes in between, the motion path also changed and the dots in between has also changed to complete the whole animation. And if we preview the animation, you can see the shape is following the zigzag path instead of the straight path. And the way After Effects is adding in between frames by taking the information from these four keyframes is called keyframe interpolation. So there are two different types of interpolation in After Effects, temporal interpolation and spatial interpolation. Now, if you select the keyframes and right click on any of the keyframe, here we get an option called keyframe interpolation. Click on it, here you get two different interpolation options. The temporal interpolation says it affects how the property changes over time in the timeline. And for the spatial interpolation, it affects the shape of the path, that means the motion path in the composition or the layer panel. So in simple terms, whenever we do any changes in this window, that means changing the position or changing the motion path, we are making changes to the spatial interpolation. And when we make any changes in the timeline, we are changing the temporal interpolation. Now you can even check it yourself, select the keyframes and again, right click on it, go to keyframe interpolation. From spatial interpolation, let's click on Bezier and you can see it has changed the motion path. So right now the paths are more smooth and more natural and the shape is going to follow this path. Okay, now let's check out four different types of keyframes in After Effects. Linear, Easy is, Roving, and the Hold keyframes. Let's start with comparing Linear with Easy is keyframes. Till now, we already know what are Linear keyframes. When we add the very first keyframe in the property, by default, After Effects adds a Linear keyframe, and it looks like the diamond icon like this. So with linear keyframes, you get a very linear movement. All the in-between frames in between the keyframes are spread out in equal distance. And you can check it out with these dots over here on the motion path. Each of the dots you see over here are a single frame in the timeline. And if we compare it with a easy keyframe, you can see the difference between the spacing between the dots. As the dots get closer to the keyframes in the easy keyframes, the space between the dots 
keeps decreasing so in this mid portion the space between the dots are maximum which means is that the lower the space between the frames the slower that object is going to move and the and more the space between the frames the faster that particular object is going to move so to understand it better i have also applied an echo effect here you can clearly see the difference between the spacing here in the linear keyframes you can see the in between frames are in equal distance it has a continuous motion due to which it starts and stops abruptly but with easy ease keyframes you can see the space between the frames are less near the keyframe and in the mid portion the space between the frames are maximum and due to this in easy ease keyframes the shape is starting slow then accelerating and then deaccelerating and stopping in the next keyframe then again continuing the same process now if we check out the motion graph editor of linear keyframe so we are in speed graph at the moment here the values are represented in speed so here you can see the speed between the keyframes is constant then again in between this keyframe is constant and there is no intersection between the change in speed now if we check the same graph for the easiest keyframe you can see for easiest keyframe it again smooths out it is starting from zero then accelerating here it has the maximum speed and then again deaccelerating then again accelerating here it gets the maximum speed then again deaccelerating and due to which with easy keyframes in each and every keyframe the shape is stopping and then again accelerating and we have three different types of eased keyframes in after effects ease in ease out and ease is now let's compare these three so to convert a linear keyframe into is in keyframe select the keyframe right click on it go to keyframe assistant and and here you get is in and the shortcut key is shift plus f9 and this is how an is in keyframe looks like to convert linear keyframe into is out keyframe again right click on it go to keyframe assistant and here you get is is out and the shortcut key is control plus shift plus f9 and this is how the is out keyframes looks like the direction is exactly opposite to is in keyframe and to convert linear keyframes into easy is keyframes again you can right click on it go to keyframe assistant and click on is is or simply press f9 in the keyboard so let's observe the motion from the motion graph editor for the is in keyframe the shape is starting fast and then stopping slowly for the is out keyframe so here the shape is starting slow with an ease and stopping fast with an abrupt movement with easy is keyframe it's basically the combination of ease in and ease out keyframe here the shape starts slowly with an ease then accelerates reaches its maximum speed at the middle portion and then deaccelerates and stops slowly with an ease and if we preview the animation you can see the same movement over here and if we check it out with the same effect here in ease in you can see the spacing between the in between frames are more compared to at the end at the end pacing are more compact so that means it is deaccelerating and then stopping for ease out the spacing of the frames at the start is very compact and by the end it is getting spread out that's why it is stopping abruptly but starting with a slow movement and for easy is we have the in between frames compressed in both the ends and in between we have the in between frames spread out that means in this region the shape is moving at a maximum speed and now let's compare the roving keyframe with the easy is and the linear keyframe so to convert a linear keyframe into roving keyframe select the keyframes and press and hold the control key and simply click on it and here the keyframes are converted to roving keyframe and this is how a roving keyframe looks like so if we check out the animation you can see the roving keyframe looks more or less similar to the linear keyframes but there is a little difference between these two we can easily spot the difference from the motion graph editor so let's jump onto the motion graph editor of roving keyframe and let's compare linear keyframe side by side so in linear keyframe we have straight lines simple straight lines but for roving keyframe we have a little curve movement and the overall curve is smooth there is no abrupt movement over here and here for the linear keyframes the bezier handles are not attached 
but for the roving keyframe the bezier handle is attached same for this one as well and due to which at this point the roving keyframe has a smooth movement but the linear keyframe still has a little abrupt movement and if we compare the roving keyframe with easiest keyframe here you can see a lot of difference for easiest keyframe the shape is starting slowly accelerating reaches the maximum speed then again deaccelerating then again repeating the same process but for roving keyframe it just smooth out the point where there is a change in speed to make the overall movement smooth and also for the roving keyframe if you jump onto the motion graph editor and try, and if you try to change the easing between the keyframes it is going to instantly change into an easy ease keyframe so this is what you have to keep in mind you can do some temporal interpolation changes like you can change the timing but you cannot change the ease while keeping the keyframes as a roving keyframe now let's check out the hold keyframes to change linear keyframes into hold keyframes select the keyframes and press and hold the control key plus the alt key and then click on it and here the keyframes are converted to hold keyframes and the hold keyframes are very simple it just cancel out the entire interpolation between the keyframes it just shows the frames that has keyframes and you can see the same with the motion graph editor here in the motion graph editor all the keyframes are in a single line at zero so for the hold keyframe it holds the frame after the keyframe so suppose if i convert this keyframe into a hold keyframe and this has a linear keyframe if we play the animation you can see from here to here there is keyframe interpolation but from here to here there is no interpolation so it is holding the frame and then once it reaches the next linear keyframe from here we again have the linear animation now we're going to check out row across time keyframes to convert keyframes into row across time keyframes select the in between keyframes right click on it and then select row across time and here the keyframes are changed to small dot like shapes now if we preview the animation you can notice that there is no abrupt movement in between the keyframes there is a very smooth movement in between where we have the roving keyframes and also if i try to adjust the time by moving the last keyframe you can see the in between row across time keyframes adjusted itself by keeping the same proportion but if you try to do any changes in the temporal interpolation for this roving keyframes it's going to change back to the previous keyframes so it was a easy ease keyframe so it just gets back to the easy ease keyframe that's because roving keyframes only have positional data but don't have any temporal data and roving keyframes are mostly used to smooth out the movement in a curved motion path and now it's time for the final example so here we have three shape block it and this circle is going to enter the screen and dodge all the three shapes and get out of the screen so let's start with adding a keyframe in the position property by clicking on the stopwatch and let's select the shape and place it outside the screen let's jump on to next six frame and place the shape over here let's jump on to next six frame again and place the shape over here again let's jump on to next six frame and place it over here again next six frame and place it over here again next six frame and place it over here again next six frame and place it over here again next six frame and place it over here again let's jump on to next six frame and place it over here so here the shape is going to rotate in a circular path and then get out of the screen by dodging all the ships so let's jump on to next six frame and let's place the shape over here again let's jump on to next six frame and place it over here again let's jump on to next six frame and let's place the shape over here and finally let's jump on to next six frame again and here the circle is going to get out of the screen okay now let's select the keyframes right click on it go to keyframe interpolation in the spatial interpolation we are going to change to continuous bezier and press ok with continuous bezier we get this bezier handles which are locked so we are going to smooth out the motion path by adjusting the bezier handles
and if necessary you can even change the position of the ball for any keyframes by selecting any keyframe in the composition window itself and simply drag it over here and from here you can even adjust the keyframe value as well. So here I have the final motion path. Let's preview the animation. Well the overall animation is not that smooth and also here the circle is passing through this arc which we don't want. Okay now let's start with converting the very first keyframe as a is out keyframe and let's convert this keyframe into an easy is keyframe. So press F9 and in between we're going to convert it into roving keyframe. So press and hold the control key and click on it to convert the linear keyframes into roving keyframe. And then I'm going to add another keyframe over here. And let's convert this keyframe into a hold keyframe. From here, it's going to hold the frame and from here, it's going to start moving. So it would look like the circle is teleporting from this position to this position. At the end, we're going to convert this keyframe into is in keyframe. And let's convert this into a roving keyframe. And we're going to select all this linear keyframe and apply rove across time. Now let's preview the animation. Well, the, it is not perfect. There are some issues over here, but it's at least better than what we got with the linear keyframes. Now to smooth up the overall animation, we are go simply going to select all this keyframe and apply rove across time. And let's select this keyframe and move the keyframe over here. And let's preview it once more. So right now it's looking a lot better and it has a smooth movement throughout the curved path. And we haven't touched the motion graph editor at all. So with the help of motion graph editor, we can make this animation even better. All right, so that is it for this video. In the next lesson, we're going to master the motion graph editor in After Effects. So if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all future updates. Until then, goodbye.